So hi, I'm so I'm I'm Beatrice. Um, and thank you so much for the kind invitation. It's 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 great fun to be here, and, and I'm always happy to to help out, uh, especially in the mission field, because my heart beats for the mission field. As you probably know, I come from the mission field. I was a missionary for nine years uh, in Albania, being Adra country director, and it was great fun. And we did run smoking cessation cessation pro program programs there as well. And um, this is why um, you know. It's it's just something that I love doing and I love presenting. So today I want to present to you a program about smoking cessation that has been very successful. It's been developed by the General Conference um, Health Ministries Department. And um, this program is based on the latest science. It uh, includes behavioral um, behavioral things as well. So, so this is very, very successful and can be run all across the churches. Um, you can run it, it's open source, it's free. Um, and if you don't want to run it as a group, if you don't, if you don't have the resources or the volunteers, that's fine because you can encourage everybody to just join online and to go through this program individually and do an online course, which is also free. Um, basically, smoking cessation is very much on our hearts. So um, let me let me share my screen here and let me introduce you to this wonderful program called Breathe Free. Two, Breathe Free Squared 2.0. So basically, it, it used to be a program um, that has that has existed since over 20 years, but it has it's being continuously updated and um, it is very, very successful. So what does Breathe Free to do for you and what are we going to go um, through here? I'm going to share with you the first overview sessions and I'm sure you will find them very, very um, important and very useful as well. Um, so what are the goals of Breathe Free? Two or breathe free squared. Um, it's of course to help you in your decision to become tobacco free because that's the goal, right? You want to quit smoking, um, but also not just quitting um, because we don't want to be negative, but we want to also uh, minimize the discomfort that quitting bring uh, brings with it. And of course, give you practical strategies to avoid any kind of triggers, but also add healthy behaviors to the daily life. So replace the bad behavior with the good behavior. And of course, the final goal to help you to become a non-smoker. This is what we want. Um, so what, uh, why are you here? This is the first question that you should ask yourself um, if you're a smoker, but also if you're a non-smoker, why are we here? Why are we listening to this stuff? Um, maybe you want to seek more knowledge. Maybe you want to know what this is all about. Um, maybe you have motivation already to quit smoking. Maybe you have a friend who should quit smoking or a family member, and you're highly motivated um, that this stops. And maybe you're supporting somebody else in their journey to quitting. And of course, family members have urged you to quit, or maybe you are the family member urging somebody else. And maybe you just don't know, and you just come along. Anyway, for everybody, there is something here. So ultimately, quitting smoking is up to you. It is your own choice, and you can choose to break free from tobacco. Yes, it's a choice. It is not something that you have to do. It's something that you definitely should do, but it's all a free choice. It's a choice to take control. So if you're scared that you may not succeed, well, you only when you fail, you can try again. And only if you don't try again, you have truly failed. So even if you fail a few times, that's okay, as long as you keep trying, okay? Choosing to be here in this program and choosing to take a program at all, that's the first step in taking control of your life. And just to try again to be tobacco free. And of course, you always need to start with this positive affirmation. I'm here because I choose to be free. I choose to be free. Um, so, of course, we need to prepare ourselves. So this is the first session, right? So it all starts with being really well prepared. Um, just quitting like that may not be too successful. So the physical preparation is very important. And here are some, some overall um, strategies that you might try. You can replace coffee and cigarettes with exercise because 
that is ultimately healthier and leads to the same effect, which is a bit of an adrenaline rush, which, which helps you to become more alert. Going for a walk after each meal, looking at your watch for three minutes, or counting backwards from 100. That is more a concentration exercise, isn't it? And of course, an abundance of good and healthy food, which is raw or cooked fresh fruits and vegetables. And yes, if you, if you are in the habit of having something to do um, for your mouth, then chew sugar-free gum. That usually helps very well. And um, nutritious finger foods are also a go-to thing, even though snacks and snacking that can backfire. Um, drinking water and healthy fruit juice, that is also a possibility. But again, be careful with the sugar content and um, just trying to focus your thoughts on a different subject. These are all preparation strategies before you quit. So you need to have a strategy in hand uh, once the craving hits. Then you need to, don't, don't look back and, and think about what you could be doing because while you're thinking, you have already lost the battle. So you need to be able to have that strategy ready when the craving comes. So an, an essential strategy here is exercise. Yes, I know, but you need to get at least 30 minutes per day of physical activity. And that can be any activity. It doesn't have to be vigorous exercise. You don't have to be running up and down the stairs or the steps every day, but exercise in any shape or form. So try to raise your heart rate several times per day because exercise gives you, of course, benefits of energy and alertness, just like a cigarette would do, right? Or a cup of coffee would do, but it has no negative side effects, it only has positive side effects. Um, so what are more benefits of physical activity? That's of course, it increases the happy hormones. And yes, exercise can make you happy and it builds your self-confidence because if you've been able to walk a little bit longer or walk a little bit faster every day and catch your breath a little bit less, um, then probably um, you feel more confident that you can do it. It promotes, of course, relaxation because only when you're physically tired, you can be truly tired and you can actually sleep better and relax better. It helps against depression. Yes, De exercise is one of the main um, helpers in fighting depression and it improves your sleep. Helps you, of course, to control weight. Yes, we know that. And builds muscle, increases your lung capacity. And especially when you're quitting smoking, um, you know your lung capacity is probably not the best. Try to blow up a balloon and then you will actually see how big your lung capacity is. Um, so exercising will help you build that capacity and make your lungs function better again. And of course, it increases your energy and improves your heart health. So exercise is the way to go. Um, of course, there are barriers. There are always barriers um, to, to physical activity. Um, the most common barrier is that you don't have enough time to, to exercise. You think, oh, I'm running out of time. I don't have that. I'm so busy. And of course, the other barrier is I don't know where to start. You know, oh, do I want to do a gym membership? Do I, what do I want to do? How do I get there? Uh, of course, you're scared of injury. You're scared of uh, that, that you're just too overweight. And, you know, that, that um, people, people might look at you. I mean, I, would I want to go jogging outside and, uh, and, and be self-conscious about myself? That's clearly a barrier. Um, the weather might be too hot or it might be too cold. You might not have a place where you can properly exercise. And of course, forgetting. Okay, so there are plenty of barriers. Why um, your, your, lazy, uh, your laziness inside, your sloth inside tells you why you can't exercise, but you can't overcome all of those barriers because there's always a way. So of course, preparing physically means you just begin an exercise program. There are plenty of programs out there. NHS programs are there, of course, for the UK citizens, but there are also um, exercise programs on YouTube, on Netflix, anywhere. So you can really start. Um, uh, you can just go walking. Walking is exercise. Going for a brisk walk outside, um, it starts with the good shoes, because if you go for a walk and you don't have good shoes, that walk will not be fun. And you will not enjoy it and probably not do it again. 
breathing deeply while you walk, that always helps. And of course, make it a full half hour. Don't make it just 15 minutes, but try to aim for half an hour. While you're walking, you can listen to an audiobook or your favorite music um, with your headphones. And of course, you can do gardening as well. Gardening is also exercise, isn't it? Mowing the lawn or taking the stairs, folding laundry, all of these things also count as exercise. So never fear, there's plenty of opportunities to do it. Now, what's another strategy before you think about quitting? It's learning to relax. Because yes, one of the things why people smoke is, oh, well, it calms my nerves. Well, newsflash, you will have to find something else to calm your nerves. So learning how to relax and finding relaxation techniques before you quit will help you when you feel that you need a cigarette in order to relax. So find a way to relax before you quit so you have that strategy ready, okay? Because learning to relax reduces tension and stress. It helps you control your frustration. It boosts your self-confidence and slows your heart rate, of course. It lowers your blood pressure, very important. And it increases your blood flow um, also to major muscles. Just like exercise, um, relaxing is just as important. And it improves, of course, concentration and the mood. So find a relaxation strategy before you quit. Now, beware of substances that can make that that can create yet another habit okay so break free of all drugs or habits that impair your judgment and what were what substances am i talking about that impair judgment of course we're talking here about alcohol and recreational drugs those are a no-go especially when you're trying to improve to, to improve your health and work on a healthy habit you should really quit all of those so check all the other habits um alcohol excessive tv watching computer computering gaming uh, excessive eating binging of any sorts anything that you do excessively is a bad habit anything where you that you don't have control over is a habit that you should tackle before you quit smoking because you, it is very easy to slip from one habit into another habit. So it is, it is very important that you analyze your life. What else is outside of my control? What else do I need, need to take control of? And then you can tackle them all at once and replace all those habits with the good habits. So what other excessive habits do we have? We mentioned TV, um, of course, spending large amounts of time on the computer. Well, many of us can't help it because we work on the screen, I know, um, but try to really minimize that to work time and take, take breaks and make sure that you're not glued to the screen until your eyes go all square, right? Um, video games are something that... Is, is can be very addictive and it can be a very bad habit, especially when it keeps you up all night and this is all you think about. And of course, overeating, binging, that is an attempt to cope with stress, with in, in emotional distress as well, loss, disappointment, overeating needs to be tackled. So try to start with your healthy food already. So are there any other activities in your life that could be destructive when you're, when you're doing them excessively. And yes, if you're excessively exercising, that can also be addictive and destructive. So be careful of excess in any shape or form. So you have to prepare yourself through good food. Um, good food will actually give you the energy you need and it will revive you from the inside and it will help you beat all those toxins that your body is fighting already through a smoking habit. So fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lots of water um, are, are good for you and that they help you beat those free radicals um, that are in your body um, through, destructive, uh, through the destructive habit of smoking. Of course, you need to avoid sugar and you should avoid processed foods and focusing and you should focus on light meals again not overeating um mental preparation is just as important because it is all in the head isn't it it's all a choice so when we talk about a free choice 
we need to be aware that we have to prepare our brains and our minds to actually do this. So, but that starts with doing. So begin to think and to act like a non-smoker. What would a non-smoker do? Um, find creative ways to replace your physical urges uh, with, with rational and healthy alternatives, okay? Uh, experience the success mentally. Do some positive affirmations. Think about it and um, picture yourself how you are not smoking. Picture yourself in situations where you would usually smoke, but picture yourself not smoking and making a choice. So it's all in the mind and trying to, trying to really imagine that it is possible. Because once you dream it, you can do it, right? Um, so you can explore all those alternate, alternative sources for help and assistance, of course, because there's plenty of programs out there. You need to prepare socially as well. So we had physically uh, with exercise and food. We had mentally with picturing um, ourselves in a non-smoking situation, and we also had um, had uh, we we also had the relaxation, the, the the mind preparation. But now we also have to prepare socially, and we have to prepare our social sphere, our friends. So you have to practice how to say no. If somebody remembers that you're a smoker and offers you a cigarette, you will have to practice to say no. And yes, you might blush, you might feel a bit on the spot, you might feel awkward, but this is something you have to practice. You can practice this with role play even. Um, so plan strategies, how to politely avoid the people that will not give you peace, that will not respect your choice, okay? So you have to probably um, learn to really talk about this. And if they will not respect that and keep smoking around you, um, then maybe you should you should tell them that for a while at least, until you're, you've broken the habit, you cannot hang out with them anymore. Um, so of course you need to learn also to resist the sales appeal of tobacco companies. Now, to be honest, when I look at those cigarette packs and I see those disgusting pictures, I know smokers are unfazed by those. But you know what? I am phased. I see those and I'm saying, okay, this looks not appealing to me. I don't like that. So just try to think about um, what it looks like and what you're buying. And of course, recognize the value of networking with people who don't smoke right? Um, because I'm sure you have a good circle of friends that are non-smokers, and I'm sure you have, you have colleagues and you have situations where you don't have to smoke and where you're not in temptation. So you cultivate those friendships and you make sure that you stick to those that respect your choice. Um, you can have a support group. Find a support group that helps. Of course, this is why we're here. We are a church. We're a mission. We're here to support anybody who makes a healthy choice. And you need to e explore um, the spiritual aspects, the moral aspects, and the ethical aspects of, of quitting smoking, right? Because there are always those. Um, so, so just think about it and prepare yourself in any social situation. Um, so here is um, a little assessment test that um, you can do in your own time. It's going to be open for a couple of times. And we also have handouts prepared for you that, that, you, can, that you can access later on and also through the website. Um, you can take the test of how dependent you actually are. This is called the Fagerstrom Nicotine Dependency Questionnaire. Um, all you have to do is count your score. And if it's really greater than eight, then you do need to talk to your GP because you're in the, in the, in the red zone, okay? So if you want to take that test, all you have to do now is scan the QR code with your mobile phones um, on the screen, and then it takes you right to the questionnaire. In brackets is the number of points you can, uh, in, in, in the multiple choice answers, you can see in brackets the number of points you get for each answer. And all you have to do is sum those points together. And in the end, you get the, the total score. And if, if, it's, if it's over eight, then it's, it's time to quit. Um, you can also just go to the website, pigeonhole AT, and enter the passcode free. That will take you to the test as well. But again, the test is also available as handouts. So 
you can you can take the test now or you can do it later a little bit um so once once you have a score over eight go to your to your gp so let's deal with addiction because now that you've probably taken a test and you found out okay i'm definitely addicted i have a problem what do i do well think about it what do i want a cigarette to do for me what will this little thing do um, to make me feel happy. Um, well, it's a thing. It's a, it's a little inanimate object that cannot make you happy. Okay, so you need to focus on what you want. And of course, you realize then that real happiness is not in an addiction. So you can, you can have a smoking diary and um, you can have a, a calendar of events um, and think about what happened in those situations that led me to smoking? So when, when you think back of the events of the last week and how often you smoked and in which situations you smoked and how you felt afterwards, then you can probably already analyze what is your, what is your craving, why you need to smoke and the reason you're smoking. So this is very important. Okay, um, for example, people often often um, connect smoking with having a cup of coffee. So it might be just the smell of coffee that may, that may make you crave a cigarette. So think of these little triggers um, as you're analyzing your smoking. There are different smoker types. And once you've analyzed yourself, then you will really know where you're falling under, which, which type you're falling under. What kind of smoker are you? You could be um, reacting to stimulation, to a certain routine, it could, it could be just to help, to help reduce your tension. And of course, it could just mean pleasure and happiness. Okay, there are different smoking types. So what are the strategies for a person that, um, that works on stimulation, that has a certain trigger um, and, and where the craving for a cigarette is triggered by a certain stimulus? Well, you can do it the hard way and splash some cold water on your face to get rid of the trigger. Well, sometimes that's not possible, um, but you can do exercises, calisthenics. You can do different kinds of exercises and relaxation exercises. I prefer the Jacobson exercise me method, which means you make a fist, you make it as, as, as tight and as hard as you can, and then you let go and you, and you focus on the relaxation in your hand and that will already take away a lot of tension and your focus as well that is a good exercise and a good strategy to have in your pocket literally because it's your fist isn't it um you can take 10 deep breaths um you can just go for a brisk walk brisk walk right away flossing your teeth and using mouthwash that actually helps to take away um, a little bit of the craving if you need something in your mouth you can have really minty toothpaste or chewing gum and of course, a glass of water never hurts. And if you put a little bit of lemon in there or lime, that is a good stimulus, but it's a healthy stimulus that helps your brain to just snap out of it and to go into a different reaction to whatever that stimulus triggers there. Um, so what are routine smokers? Routine smokers, they have a certain routine and they, they have their cigarettes at certain times of day. Um, so what can they do when that routine appointment with their cigarette comes along? Well, instead they can do doodling. They can play with a tooth, toothpick or chew on a carrot, flip a coin, um, have some nuts ready to, to chew on. Um, of course, having a, another glass of water or fruit juice having a hobby because sometimes it's just a feeling that you want in your hands. You can, you can take up sewing, crocheting, painting, drawing, okay? Um, and have fidgeting obviously with a rubber band or a power ball that also can help if you have a certain routine and it's the routine that triggers your craving. Well, those who do it to relax, well, obviously relaxation techniques. You can go for a leisurely walk, you can listen to calming music, get some rest, um, do some breathing exercises, um, repeat your choice, your positive affirmations, pick flowers. Well, maybe not pick all the flowers, especially not in spring because they're so pretty when <laughs> in the flower beds. Um, a hot tub might do the trick. Um, find relaxation techniques that help you when the, when the tension that triggers your craving comes along. And those that just smoke for pleasure, well, 
There's plenty of other things to find pleasure in. Soaking in a hot tub, going for a walk, reading a book, visiting a friend that doesn't smoke. Very important here, the social interaction. Doing some relaxing exercises, doing something nice for somebody else, engaging socially, volunteering. This is a good thing to, to help you snap out of it and out of your own little world and break out of this. Um, of course, focusing on the other senses that are not involved in smoking, um, like the sense of, of vision, sense of smell, sense of hearing, you know where I'm going. Um, you can really do lots and lots of beautiful things that also give you pleasure instead. Now, this is all in preparation, okay? You haven't yet quit. You're still preparing to quit. So what do we do to really prepare for it? Well, the physical addiction, we're always scared of that physical addiction. Oh, well, I'm going to get the jitters. But actually, that is not so bad. Um, it's relatively easy to break. And most of the nicotine will, be, will have been flushed out of your body after one week of total abstinence. Think about it. It's actually not so bad. The, mo the main thing is the psychological addiction. So breaking the psychological addiction is much more challenging than breaking the physical addiction. So you need to stick with the program and with the plan that you're setting for yourself. And you really need to, need to make that choice and commit to it. Commitment is very important here. So what, how do we deal with this? So, so we need to know what, we need to understand a little bit what's, what psychological addiction is. So we talked a lot about cravings and urges and triggers, but what is that actually? So cravings are a biochemical reaction. That's your body telling you that you need a certain substance to function or to have the, 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 the physical uh, reaction that you think you need in a certain situation. So that's a craving. So when you're hungry, that's traditionally a craving for food, right? So you can have a craving for nicotine because your body is trying to fulfill um, that biochemical need for the substance that um, causes the addiction. But what's an urge? An urge is a short psychological impulse. That's something, oh, I need something now, right now. Oh, I need a piece of chocolate. I need a coffee. I need a cigarette. So that's an urge, but that's really just in your head. But both craving and urges can lead to a relapse. So you have to be aware that there's a, a physical form and a psychological form that can lead you back to smoking. So what's a trigger then? A trigger is anything that can start the act of smoking. So it could be socializing, it could be a party, it could be after a meal, sitting down, um, it could be certain tasks that require concentration, driving or other work duties, and it could be even um, a feeling like a depression, boredom, frustration, or even anger uh, that triggers your need for a cigarette. Now, you can substitute those triggers um, and, and, have, and have different activities instead. So when something triggers you and, and it triggers the urge, the, the psychological urge, or it triggers the physical craving, you can choose other activities instead of smoking. You can take a shower, go for a walk, breathe, uh, do relaxation techniques. We talked about all those strategies, and you have to have those ready in your pocket when the trigger comes along so you can do something else instead. So time, of course, is your friend um, because the more committed you are and the longer you stick with it, the more difficult it will be for the triggers and for the urges um, to break through. So it is definitely possible to stop, okay? But it's most, most easy when you have a network of people that encourage you and that support you when this desire hits. You can call that friend or text a friend and say, oh, I really have a craving right now. And they can say, no, no, you'll be okay. Do this, do that. You have somebody in there with you. You can give yourself advantages by preparing early, by doing all those preparation techniques that we talked about in the beginning. So you can have a stock full of healthy snacks like fresh fruits and vegetables. You can have a pile of chewing gum right there in your desk drawer. You can have comfortable walking shoes, something that, that um, will not prevent you from taking that walk when the craving hits. And of course, extra bottles of water because everything that takes time in order to do it 
um, that can lead you right back into smoking. So just be very careful that you're well prepared and well stocked. And of course, a prayer is always helpful. You can pray for help because who is your best friend? Who is your creator that wants you to quit? That is, of course, God. And you can always turn to him for amazing and abundant support. So what will happen when you quit? Um, on the first day, well, you will actually have more oxygen in your blood. Carbon monoxide is the main ingredient um, of smoke. It's, it, is, it, is the, it is the substance that binds to your blood cells, to your little red blood cells, but is not oxygen, but is carbon monoxide. So those blood cells are full and saturated with carbon monoxide so that they cannot transport any more oxygen. So on the first day, you will actually be able to have more oxygen in your body because the carbon monoxide levels drop dramatically because suddenly your blood cells, your little red blood cells are free and they can carry much more oxygen and they're happy. And you can just imagine how they're dancing around in your blood vessels, right? On the second day, your chances of having a heart attack are already lower. That's great. And even your sense of smell and taste will improve um, because, yes, cigarette smoking does affect your sense of smell and taste. And suddenly you will be able to taste food much better and it will be wonderful for you. On the third day, your lung function will already improve and it will get easier for you to breathe. Try to blow up that balloon on the third day and see how far you get. Well, in three months, your blood circulation will vastly improve and your lungs will work already so much better, especially when you're doing that exercise 30 minutes a day. In six months, you will, you will um, not cough anymore. You will not have a stuffed nose or a blocked nose anymore. Your tiredness will subside and your shortness of breath will definitely improve. You will be just in a better physical shape. In a year, your heart, your heart attack risk and uh, any heart, heart problems, cardiovascular disease, um, that risk will be reduced by half. So when you think, well, you know, I've been smoking all my life. There's no point now. Actually, that is not true. Within one year of quitting, your risk of having heart problems is, is um, reduced by half, a 50% less risk and that is amazing that is great so there is definitely a point of quitting at any time after 15 after 10 years um your risk of dying of lung cancer is cut in half now think of that lung cancer is something very very serious and of course if you can reduce that risk then you've made it and within 15 years um it will be as if you have never smoked so if you smoked 15 years, but then you quit for 15 years, it will, it will be as if that never happened because your body will have fully recovered and your mind will have fully recovered. And isn't that wonderful news that the map is out there, your body is able to heal just when you break that bad habit. And I think that is, that is a wonderful thing. And this is, this is how creation is always a miracle to me. So what do you do? You have to decide when to quit. You need to make a choice when you will smoke your last cigarette. So um, the Breathe Free program has, of course, a few sessions. And if you want to go ahead with that program, you will have to prepare very well. And by the third session, you will have to say bye-bye. Okay, that's, that's when the cutoff point is. Now, of course, it is your, your time that you decide when you want to quit. But make a big cross on your calendar, say that's quitting day and stick with it. So be prepared mentally that from tomorrow on, that is what's not going to happen anymore. I will not smoke. I will breathe freely. Um, again, it's good with preparation. Consume at least eight to 10 glasses of fruit juice or water for the first 24 hours. Stay hydrated because that will help you with the withdrawal symptoms. Uh, of course, you should avoid soft drinks and artificially flavored drinks because they can make you feel a little bit jittery as well. Um, of course, you should avoid those drinks that you associate with smoking, like alcohol, coffee or tea or something. Um, 
one word on the fruit juice that is really just for the first 24 hours fruit juice in itself is not such a healthy drink that you should just only have fruit juice okay so water is still the healthiest choice um, when you're drinking and when you're hydrating okay um, so how do you prepare for quit day even more you need to avoid alcohol because alcohol um, impairs your judgment so anything that impairs your judgment it's not good, so don't do that on quit day. Okay, avoid um, the drinks that we already said. Sleep, have a good night's sleep, because if you're all tired and, and wired and, and feeling weird, and if you're not well rested well, that can lead you right back into it. Have a good breakfast and good healthy meals that will prepare you for anything and give you the energy you need to pull through. Um, you can use an acronym, and don't we all love acronyms? Ideal is a good one. So identify the positives and negatives of smoking. Decide when to stop and make that choice and evaluate the benefits of your stopping and the consequences of not stopping. And we just said the benefits of, of stopping are amazing, right? Um, and then act by setting this specific date to stop and learn from others how to be a non-smoker. Um, so if you want to change a habit, you need to understand it. You can choose your own behavior. You are in control of your life. You have to believe in yourself and believe that you can do it and be a non-smoker. You need to review the negative consequences of what's been before and the positive behaviors of what will come and the positive benefits of what will come later on. And of course, reward yourself. Reward yourself um, once you have pulled through. Give yourself a medal, okay? And, and, and reward yourself with something pleasant because you did it. And if, if, if it's a week, that's great. If it's 10 days, that's better. Just make sure that you always positively reinforce yourself. Practice a new habit. Uh, all, all of those habits that we talked about. And of course, make a value statement. Examine your own personal beliefs and values. That is very important. What do you actually want in life? And then, of course, ask God for help always. Um, how can you strengthen your resolve once you've made that decision and once you've actually have quit and once, once that day has come? Well, write a contract. Sign that contract. Stamp it if you have a stamp. Do something very serious and have that contract on your desk and say, this is the contract I've made with myself. Okay, make sure you've, tell, you're, you've told your friends and family that you are quitting on that day. Don't allow for any escape clauses, right? No exceptions, no ifs, no buts. And of course, recognize that even if you fail, it is not a failure if you relapse. It, it is not a failure if you try again. It, failure is only if you relapse again. So if you can't make it through one day, fine. Try again the next day. Try and try and try, okay? But stick to your resolve as much and as best as you possibly can. Reward yourself. Um, model somebody who doesn't smoke. Do what they do, you know? And of course, avoid negative peers that will lead you back into your habit and take control of your thoughts. Um, you can do a smoking journal where you can, um, where you can uh, write down how you're feeling. Um, that will help you prepare um, for, your, for your triggers and for your cravings. We don't have to go into every single thing here, but um, you, will, you will be able to receive the handouts later on. And of course, look forward to the journey because there's only good things ahead. Okay, so what you can do to prepare, save your cigarette butts for two days, see how many they are. And actually then bring them to class or show them to a friend. And then you will actually see how much there was. You are probably not aware of it because you know you smoke and you throw your cigarette butt away, don't you? But if you collect it, and if by the end of the week you have a little bucket full, then you realize how much it actually was, all right? So keep good track of your cravings and of your triggers and make a note of it so you're prepared. And write down how much time you spend smoking, how many breaks you actually need. And of course, write down your budget. How much money do you actually spend on this? Because this habit is not cheap at all. And then try to find 
a different way to spend that money, hopefully on something good, on something uh, that is social, on something that, that, um, that helps others, but also reward yourself with something nice um, that you've done it. So, of course, um, there are follow-up programs available. Breathe Free is a, is, a, is a program that can run over several sessions. Okay, so you have to decide when you want to stop. Um, you can use a calendar. We can, we can provide you with a calendar in your notebook to put a date and a time. And of course, you need to just cross out every day that you haven't smoked, just so you can visualize how successful you have been. And of course, preparation activities, like we said, stocking up on all those things that will help you when the craving hits, um, that, will, that will be very, very helpful for you. And of course, you can ask, as always, you can ask God to give you victory, to give you back control over your life. So I hope that this was very informative for you. Um, that you took something away. I know it was a lot of information, and but as you see, as you can see in smoking cessation, um, you have to prepare very well, and it is not just a decision that you spontaneously make, but you can do it if you're prepared. And a program, and many programs are available to help you through it. And for those who are in churches, of course, it is easy for you to run those programs and to help others through them.